Scott. I'm Lucia. Uh, I'm Eva. So we are here in the National Concert Hall and we are performing um, Rebels Valero. Uh, we're all part of the National Youth Orchestra of Ireland. My name is Claire Daly and I'm the chairperson of the Irish Association of Youth Orchestras and I'm delighted to be here. It's all, there's always such an exciting atmosphere here. We have eight orchestras going through the hall today with uh, over 500 musicians. Yeah, we're really excited. We've been looking forward to this for months. I think it's a great opportunity for yeah, the junior definitely. orchestra also like, to join we us. Have, yeah, with the junior orchestra joining us as well, and it's like their first ever experience, so it's a big thing for them. It'll be something they remember for a while. <laughs> to have kids allowed to be perform on their national stage is just something totally special, and you can see the excitement in them from when they arrive in the morning. They keep that excitement going all through the day through their rehearsals, but really importantly in their performances, which are always amazing. And I suppose the festival is special in that it's about the opportunity to play on the stage, so it's not competitive. It's for everybody playing in their orchestras. It's a chance to showcase and celebrate youth orchestras in Ireland. You know that they get to meet um, other young people, other young musicians from all parts of the country that they might not get to meet otherwise. We're playing um, when I'm 64, Hungarian dance and first team training in Ireland. I started the violin four years ago, I think. Get ready, boots. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. When you come here, if you're backstage, you can feel the buzz, the palpable excitement for them of, of a day that's really special. And a lot of them will remember it for the rest of their lives. This is our 25th one, it's big, but we can't wait to keep this momentum going for maybe another 25 years, maybe another 50 years. And we'll see you on the National Concert Hall stage again. And then there's the question of, of the sound. So what has anyone, has anyone got, I just, just put your hand up if you have any ideas. What sort of sound should we produce to sound like we're in insane amounts of heat? Does anybody, anyone want to just unmute themselves and, and say what they think? Because you're all brave people, I know it. There. Top note here is B. That's quite bonkers. Nobody's really done that even since that. And here as well. Two, 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 two. Day two of Concorda reimagined. Andre couldn't find his toilet roll, despite looking everywhere. He called the office, but all Sophie had was a book. <laughs> <laughs> Need to be 
30 or 70, depending on what mood he's in. Right. <laughs> Great. How many beats were each note lasting for? Eight. Good stuff, Ava. <laughs> your fingers look I'm gonna swing my hat my arm I'm gonna go one two three four one two four so that I'm getting all the notes look at my elbow it's really what the ear accepts as as being in tune that matters we're, we're human beings thankfully rather than computers Havan and the Galliard were two of the critical dances in the 16th century and as far as I in all my research as far as I can see every single Baroque dance comes from one or the other of these. Baroque, I was thinking afterwards you know for Baroque viola you really really need to just play in an ensemble and that's how you learn and I was just thinking afterwards oh, I didn't really say that to you that the more you play with others the more you'll pick up the Baroque viola skills really so Hello there, Daniel O'Donnell here, and I'd just like to tell you about something that's happening on the 21st of June. And a number of people have come together now to organise this incredible musical initiative called Ode to Joy. We're calling on all musicians, singers, poets and dancers to step outside their front door and to perform a nationwide tribute, performing Ode to Joy. <laughs> Strengthening independence and confidence is all a really, really strong part of it, of people who engage with chamber music and having their own parts in it. That you were creating connections between children the same way as you would in a live orchestra setting. Um, with in order to communicate through jamless. We're going to talk about the, the individual features in a moment. So ultimately, that's that's what's about is this hierarchy of control from elimination down to PP. New to to little kids who are or may only have played very very basic harmonies. Then the thing I'm going to do is just we'll all play D together, um, and we're trying to tune and really listen in. Um, I'll give you an A. I'm bang on four forty. I think. Okay, um, right, Nisha, that's that's a lot better. Just remember that a lot of what you can do can be done from here. Mm -hmm. 
You see that? Oh yeah, it, go, it goes straight to, it goes from, you have the crescendo into the mezzo forte, and then in bar, bar nine, you have the yeah. double piano. Super yeah, we well, see, if yeah. you don't do it, the musicians get the impression that you don't want it. What I love about my job, I suppose, as the artistic director of Ivy, is finding that piece that nobody else has done, and finding that piece that will amaze somebody when they hear it as much as I was amazed the first time that I've heard it. Because when you think about uh, the artistic director, conductor of the ensemble, has to work on the piece for a week. But in order for me to work well, in, in, in my own personal opinion, for me to work well on anything, I have to be captured by it as well. Nala reminds us that even when in the presence of such natural beauty, it can be difficult to escape the true pain we've experienced, and that the only true relief may be in dreams.